What is up, everybody? Azario here, and welcome to the final video of my Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk birthday vlog of, of videos that I will be putting on this playlist. Um, basically, what I'm, what I'm going to do in this video is just give you a recap of everything that happened. Uh, there was a couple things that I wanted to do but didn't do because of unfortunate circumstances while I was out in Santa Cruz enjoying myself. Um, as well as some other things that have happened, you know, hence the reason why you see it in the title. And I, I'm going to speak on that as the video goes on. So, I might as well take these glasses off. And another thing, forgive my bed head, you know. <laughs> I was, um, I just woke up and it was just on my mind to do this after I had read up on some things. And, you know, and I just said, you know what, fuck it, I don't need to look like I'm all quote unquote camera ready to, in order to do what I'm finna do because it's the thought that counts but anyway just to give you guys a recap of everything that happened so August 10th was my birthday which was on Sunday and um last week on Saturday which was August uh, uh, which was uh, August 9th excuse me um my sister as well as a couple of my as well as a couple other of my family members decided that they wanted to take me out you know, to Santa Cruz for my birthday, because, you know, ever since I've been out here, I, I've been out here pretty much for like three months now, and I barely did anything, and they didn't want me to stay locked up in the house, you know, playing video games as I do on here, as you know, and, um, making videos, like, they wanted me to get out and have fun, because unlike Louisiana, or, the, or that part of Louisiana that I was living in, there isn't too much there for me to do, like, literally, being in house being at the house and staying inside playing video games and just talking on the phone a little shit like that that is pretty much like the best thing you can do to pretty much keep yourself entertained because <laughs> it's literally that boring out there so that's pretty much all i'm used to so when they you know told me that they were going to take me somewhere i was like you know what all right i'm game you know what i'm saying like really like what's the worst that can happen so i went out to santa cruz uh let me see it was on August 10th, like that was the exact day we went, early morning August 10th, like we drove from here all the way out to Santa Cruz, which is about like a good two hour drive, pretty much, um, like the traffic wasn't too heavy going, but man those roads, <laughs> like man those roads, you guys can see in my introductory video, you know, I wasn't feeling it too much, um, if it wasn't for that damn Reggie Pop <laughs> that my cousin girlfriend had gave me. Uh, she said that it's for pregnant women, but it's not just for them, you know, it's filled with vitamin B and some nausea medicine. And, uh, you know, as we're driving from here to Santa Cruz, mind you, there's a road that literally has like a bunch of twists and turns. It's pretty much like Snake Way off of Dragon Ball Z. Imagine driving, driving down that road. <laughs> it's literally a bunch of curves that you have to do, and the whole time I'm going like this, like, I don't mean to look silly, but <laughs> I was literally, you know, feeling queasy afterwards, and it was to the point where I just didn't have any energy to do anything, and fortunately enough, my cousin, his girlfriend had, you know, one of those Reggie Pops that, that, that helps out with nausea, and it actually worked wonders, you know, <laughs> I just hope I don't grow boobs for, eating, for taking that thing, but nevertheless, no, no, all jokes aside, but so, so when we finally arrived in Santa Cruz, we walked from the hotel that we were staying in, which was the Inco Lodge, which was like a good, I don't know, pretty much like a good, I would say, 10 to minute walk at the most, just depending on how fast you were walking. But we walked straight to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, you know, and it was like a bunch of rides there. It was arcade games, um, you know, it was good food there, a lot of nice looking girls there too, I have to admit, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was just like a lot of activity going on there, and there was like this big stage right there in the middle of the beach, and when I first got there, I didn't see anything happening on there, and I, if there was any shows performing, I wanted to get, you know, that on camera, but when we first got there on August 10th, you know, on my birthday, uh, all the shows had already finished. So I was like, man, I missed that. So 
like we ended up getting the $45 uh, 50 ticket deal. So we got us like 50 tickets. I think I still have like a couple of those tickets just to show you. Let me see. I think I still got, yep, there you are right here. Still got a couple of those tickets from the Beach Boy Walk. <laughs> Pretty much as like a souvenir as to remind me as to, you know, what uh, I did out there, I guess you could say. And, um, you know, the first ride that me and my cousin went on, yeah, he came with me, and I can't remember the name of it. I think it was called The Surfboard. And it was like this weird ride where, where it was like four seats, and it was two seats pretty much just back to back. And like you sit down, and this latch comes on, comes, uh, um, on your lap and so like you're locked in and like you have to hold on to like this handle up front and as it's riding around mind you there's like a lot of curves and like steep drops on this ride so as we're going up uh like we're locked in you know everything's fine and mind you like the ride actually like spins around itself so the whole time you're curving around and you're dipping the ride is actually spinning like really fast and th then it goes clockwise and then counterclockwise it was ridiculous man and those steep drops were like so unpredictable it was like you've seen them coming but your body just isn't going to be ready for it in time because <laughs> it happens just like that it was like oh curve okay oh steep hips you know oh a uh, little steep drop you know and then all of a sudden it, it just happens and it was fun apparently i was screaming i don't have any uh recollection of me doing that anyway <laughs> but it was fun though and you know when we got off you know I was laughing I was having a good time and you know it was a different change of pace and uh, after that I can't remember what the next ride we went on let me see I don't think we got on another ride after that I think we got uh, some food and I think we tried to break a plate afterwards. Hold on, because I'm trying to get all this in order. It's, it's a good thing I did vlog to this. Um, I should really look this up on my laptop. <laughs> just to keep myself in check and in order. Yeah, so, so forgive me for my unprofessionalism. And I know this would have happened. I would have had it open at first. Like I said, I just want to make sure that I get everything in order that I did it so that I can have a, an accurate re retrospect video so after the surfboard me and my cousin had went to ride on the skyline now the skyline ride was like four tickets and basically what it was supposed to do was carry you from one end of the park all the way over to the next because the park was like long like really wide and as we're on this thing like we just couldn't help but laugh and look around at the sights and everything going on and mind you that this ride is on like this this thick thick wire up top and the worst thing that could happen right now is like a final destination moment and it just snaps and we all just fall to our doom and the whole time like we were just laughing and joking and the ride was you know, like the skyline chair was like bouncing up and down, and it was like, man, stop laughing, stop, stop making jokes. <laughs> you know, I'm getting nervous, man, because this ain't funny no more. Like, just calm down, you know. And it was something creepy too. Like, I don't know. Like, it was like this big poly, this uh, big plaster uh, figure on one of the rides, and it just, it just looked spooky. And even though it didn't do it, it seemed like it turned its head as it was passing us by. And I got it on camera too, you guys will see that. Um, so that was uh, what happened next. After that, we went to the break a plate vendor. And it was like $2 for like one ball, and I, was, and I think it was like $3 for, no, uh, it was $2 for one ball. And it was three for five dollars. And I did like the one ball uh, toss. 
and you know I threw the ball off the mark and it bounced out of the area onto the beach <laughs> and it was just hilarious man it was really ridiculous after that I got me some more food and I had eaten some roasted corn and then I got me like some fried fish or some garlic fries which basically is just french fries with like this garlic onion mixture on top of it which wasn't too good like the fries were okay um and the fried fish was so so but the garlic fries they could have used some ketchup and I found some ketchup like right across from that vendor that I was at so yeah like the garlic fries are good I just wish they didn't put those chives on there because it was like a garlic and chive mixture you know on top of the fries and the chives taste like plastic like they almost tasted fake like I didn't swallow any of those like anytime I bit down on one of those pieces I just spit it out like it was just ridiculous but the last ride that we went on that was called the fireball it was the fireball and actually I didn't get on that ride I wanted to but I didn't because I was after I had threw that ball um, I don't know what it was but I think I hurt my neck somehow and, and my neck just felt like weird and I didn't want to get on another ride that day or that night so I just decided that you know what never mind I'm just not going to get on this one so my cousin uh, and his sister went on the fireball and that whole time now mind you when, when you're looking at the fireball it doesn't look like much it's one of those rides where looks can be very deceiving all it is it's just like this big round uh, chair seat right like this big circular uh, uh, group of chairs and, and it's just you know so like round and it just spins around and the machine just swings back and forth while this is spinning so it doesn't seem like much now inside however this is a completely different story because I'm listening to everybody on the fireball and they're just like screaming to the top of their lungs and I could literally see my cousin in one of the seats as it was rotating and he had like this this oh my god like I just seen a ghost look on my face the entire time and I couldn't zoom in on the camera to really get a good look at him because as it was rotating you know like I couldn't catch it but I got like an aftermath interview <laughs> with him and he just looked like man I am not doing man now I'm ready to go <laughs> he just looked like he was just ready to get the hell up out of there like he did not want to go back on there you know like if you would have asked him to get on anything like a carousel or anything at all like he would have just said fuck no <laughs> like he just wasn't into it so that ended day one and you know it was pretty good got back at the hotel room you know ate some birthday cake you know pretty good you know, matter of fact I got some right here right now you know as you can see it it's pretty much nothing but icing right now but nevertheless you know it was pretty good like it's like a it was a white cake with some delicious icing on top of it and it was filled with strawberries so if you guys haven't checked out my Facebook pictures I have a photo album if, if I'm able to like link it somewhere in this video then I will do that but if you guys have a Facebook you know go check out that photo album because I think it's for everyone to see regardless if you're on my friends list or not but you guys can check out all the pictures of everything the cake the the pictures of you know like the beach and all of that and um yeah I had a lot of fun there so that ended day one uh, the next day you know we walked well actually we drove back to the boardwalk and we entered through the Neptune's Kingdom. Now, now Neptune's Kingdom is like an arcade, like a a miniature golf, and supposedly that there was also like a pool in there, but I didn't see anything like that. But first thing we did was that we had went in there to the Fisherman's Galley, which is like a seafood place. They had you know different type of seafood burgers. They had regular burgers, you know, chicken burgers, 
Um, they had fish plates. They had not fish plates, but they had like fried fish, fried calamari, which is basically basically just deep fried squid and octopus. You know, um, they had fried calamari, they had fried shrimp. You know, French fries. You know, what I'm saying like things like that. It was pretty much just a good uh, seafood place. And I had actually got this this order called the seafood combo, where it's fried calamari, a fried piece of fish, and as well as six fried shrimp all on a bed of fries and I also got this this cool sippy cup and the cool thing about this cup is is that as long as you have this like even if you leave the park and you come back like the next day or whatever you still get to get like 99 cent refills like you don't have to pay full price for a drink for as long as you have this cup you know what I mean like so this is actually like a good investment if you're going there you know and like you want you something to drink you know get you one of these cups and then pretty much like drinks are only like a dollar so this is actually a good investment so you can see that right there Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk you know they have it right there got some nice decor on the back cool sippy cup and this is actually the right here like this is the ride that we were on like I don't know if you can get a good look at that like that is actually the ride that we were on that I, that I was talking about earlier in the video I think it's called the surfboard. Like then, like it didn't have a name, but I think it's called the surfboard. Cause I see people like surfing on the side, so I'm thinking that's what the what it was called. But nevertheless, uh, day two we went to Fisherman's Galley. After we left there, I mean, well, uh, after we got through eating, it was an arcade like right next to it. It was like this big arcade, and I took a tour all around the arcade to see all the games. And I mean, it was a lot of classic games back from the 90s, pinball machines, they had, uh, they had, uh, Time Crisis, they had House of the Dead 4, they had SNK vs. Capcom 2, they had the original Street Fighter 4 there, um, they had, uh, The Simpsons was there. They had like a Mario Kart racing game. They, they had some variations of like Dance Dance Revolution. Like I couldn't remember the, the exact name, but you guys can watch the video and you guys can see it. Uh, they had um, Tekken 3 and they had Tekken 4 there. They have Virtual Fighter 2 and 4. Um, they had like a bunch of racing games there. Uh, they had Wars Aid. They had uh, like a new Pac-Man game. It was a new Batman game that they had there that I seen promoted on like a Dave and Buster's. I think that's the same one. And I didn't play it, but mind you, like I didn't play any of these games because we had to go. But uh, I did make sure to walk around, you know, every inch of that place and got every game that I could get on camera. And I, I believe I got all of them. All of them, like there was like a boxing machine, like just a bunch of little things. Um, they had fireball, they had like fire hoops or something like that. Basically, it's just the old uh, ski ball uh, uh, Chuck E. Cheese games, and they just renamed them to, to something else, but. Yeah, I remember climbing up those things as a kid, as I mentioned in the video, and, you know, just tossing a ball right there dead center, and I would get, like, a shit ton of tickets, and I would never get caught. <laughs> but, yeah, like, it was cool. So, that was a nice trip down memory lane, especially if you're a gamer and you grew up in the arcades like I did. You're going to remember a lot of those games in there, you know, and... Just the ambiance of being in an arcade again. I mean, dude, I was getting the itch back. Like, I, I I had to jump on one of those games, but I couldn't because, you know, you know, we, we had to leave. So after we left there, we went down. Let me see. Where did we go after we left there? We had went down to the the uh. Hold on, let me see. Because uh, I think we went somewhere uh, before we had went to the milk bottle toss. The 
guest care room. That's where we had to go uh, because like we had to get a wheelchair for my little cousin. She uh, had her knee injured. For, for, for whatever reason, like her kneecap had shifted to the side or something happened to her to where she was on crutches and she couldn't, you know, obviously like that's a big park, she couldn't walk around. So we went to the guest care unit and we had got her a wheelchair and we were rolling around and then we went to the milk bottle toss. Now this is where something funny happens. Um, now mind you, we were at the milk bottle toss for like a good 10 minutes just throwing, you know, the balls at the milk bottles. If, if you knock down all the milk bottles, then you get like a big prize on your second and third try. If you knock down all the milk bottles, then you get like one of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, smaller prizes. And, you know, we're trying to toss the, the balls at the milk bottles, me and my cousin Marvin, you know what I'm saying? Like he was the one in the introduction of the video and he was the one on the ride with me on the surfboard. You know, he was, me and him, we were just, you know, saying like, uh, tossing milk bottles. Me, I was off again by this much before I had a chance to knock down all the, well, like, well, I was this close from knocking down all the milk bottles. I'm talking too fast. I need to slow down. And, you know, he almost had it. He, he, he came close twice to winning something. And then out of nowhere, my little cousin in the wheelchair, right? She decides that she wants to give it a try. Now, me being cocky, I was like, man, this girl isn't going to hit anything. This is going to be funny. I was trying to see her, you know, th th throw a ball from the wheelchair and knock down all these uh, milk bottles. So, with that being said, you know, she paid them for three balls. And on a first toss, she was way off. I was like, ha! You know, we were laughing at her and they're like, girl, you are not going to hit those milk bottles from that chair. Soon as I said that, on the second toss, she just chugged it, knocked down every one. I didn't say anything else after that. <laughs> like, how the one in a wheelchair is going to get it? And we're, here we are with two legs and we... Like, what the hell did we do wrong? You know, <laughs> like, she just threw it, and she just knocked down everyone on her second uh, try. So it was just like, man. And I think she went for it again, but she didn't get anything that second time. But just for her to get that, I was like, wow. Man, I lost a little bit of my manhood that day. <laughs> but, no, it was fun. And um, after we got from there, uh, one of the stage performers that I tried to get the previous day on the 10th, uh, like you see him walking around on stilts and there was these other band members just beating up on drums, you know, making a lot of noise, waving a flag and all that. Uh, you know, it was time to head to the stage in order for them to perform. Now, mind you, they had two shows that day. One was at 12 o'clock and another one was at 3. Now, we didn't make the 12 o'clock show because we came there like an hour late. But we were there in time for the 3 o'clock, so I ran up the ramp in order for me to, to get like a good view of the stage and the performers. And let me see, do I have that card with me? Let me grab this real quick. Uh, all right. But yeah, we had, um, I ran up the ramp in order to get, let me make sure this thing didn't conk out or anything. I know sometimes it cuts off on its own. All right. But yeah, we had a. Uh, I ran up there in order to see the performance, and the performance was quite lengthy. I think it was like a good twenty-eight minutes, and you see these guys. They were like beating on the drum, beating on the drums. Actually, they're called the the, the uh, street drum corps. You see right there, the street drum corps, and there's like different group members. I think they said one of the group members was from the dance group uh, Academy of Villains. If anybody watches like Vibe dance shows and things like that, you, you guys have pretty much recognized that name. I think one of the group members came from there. Uh, they were like twirling around fire. I, I have a strong feeling that that show would have been a lot better at night. Because what they were doing, it seemed to cater towards a nighttime audience and they had like stage lights and all of that. So it seemed to be geared towards entertaining people, you know, um, at nighttime. 
but it was pretty pretty cool seeing all the uh, you know the performers you know having fun on stage beating on the drums making music and all of that uh, at one point like they splashed water on the barrels that they were beating on and they were uh, actually like drumming and like you see like the water splashing up and actually like the name of the performance was called Lost at Sea so it kind of you know played towards it they were playing with fire one guy had like this fire ring with like these fireball chains attached to him and he was just twirling it around another another guy who probably was the same guy that was twirling the fire ring um, like he had lit two swords on fire and he was doing like you know some sword play up uh, while the, the other ones were just beating on the drums and uh, like it was a nice show and afterwards they had actually had like a small meet and greet um, right there and I got some pictures of them and it had like this little card again the pictures are on my Facebook so go watch it so, and they were handing out these cards right here you know apparently they were in the Las Vegas magazine you know they have bookings right there so if anybody wants to you know give them a shout out or anything like that check them out um, I, I got two videos of them on my playlist so you guys can see the performance that I seen uh, forgive like the one or two times the camera did autofocus but I made sure that it was clear enough for everybody to enjoy make sure how many much time I got but anyway uh, when I got back home you know it was fun and it was other things that I wanted to do at the park, but however, due to the fact that my cousin, his girlfriend, uh, she used to have pneumonia, and, you know, I think like a day after she came with us, you know, she started like developing symptoms of it again, like she started having chest pains, but she said that she was fine, and you know after the performance I didn't want to keep them there any longer because she had a doctor's appointment but she said that she could just reschedule but I didn't want to you know what I'm saying like fuck the rides fuck all of that you know if something would have happened to her just because you know it's my birthday and we doing whatever I wanted to do you know I don't give a damn about those rides she, she's sick she needs to go to the hospital now she said she talked to the doctor uh, prior to us going to the boardwalk that second time and she said that if she wasn't pregnant then it wouldn't have been an issue. But because she's in her first trimester, you know, she needs to see the doctor right away on that same day. So we had to, so I was just like, you know what, after this performance, let's just go. So we had went to turn in the wheelchair and we had walked back to the car and then we just left and went home after that. And those curves, man, those curves, <laughs> it wasn't as bad the second time, you know. So overall, it was a pretty fun experience and you know, when I got back home, man, I was just worn out. I was just tired. I just didn't have the energy to do any gameplay or anything like that. And I was worn out. Even today, I still don't feel like I have the energy to do anything too much. But um, nevertheless, when I got back home, well, actually on my way back home, I kept hearing this thing about Robin Williams. Like, like Robin Williams, Robin Williams this. Like, oh, man, Robin Williams is everywhere. I was like... You know, so what's going on with Robin Williams? Like, what? You know, saying like there's a new movie coming out, or you know, saying like did something crazy happen? I came back just to find out Robin Williams hung himself, man. or apparently he died from suicide, um, and supposedly he had hung himself, or I don't know what exactly had happened, but apparently he committed suicide, and you know. One thing that I can't deny is that if you were around during the 80s and the 90s, you know, a lot of the best movies that came out was was uh, starring Robin Williams as the lead actor. You know, I can go down the list of, you know, Miss Doubtfire, Jumanji, uh, Night at the Museum, etc., etc. It was a lot of... Uh, you know, movies and shows that I used to watch with him in them and to hear about somebody that you liked 